Hey guys, um, a lot of people have been asking me how to farm as a solo barbarian, and there's several ways you can do it. I prefer to stack up the Nephilim Valor buff and then kill bosses, because you're guaranteed to get like two yellows and a lot of blues. It's um, really easy to get good gear that way. Uh, today I'm going to be doing Act 2, and I'm going to be farming up to kill Belly Owl with five stacks. So this video is going to cover all of that. And I warn you, like, the idea is to get the five stacks and kill him. Like, as long as you can do that, it doesn't matter how rough the road is, let's say. Because the payoff will be worth it. If you're not able to keep the, the stack rolling, then go back to Act 1. Or uh, try a different strategy somewhere else. I'm also going to make a later video where I do Act 3. Uh, also stacking five and then killing a boss. Um, that will be uploaded later this week. So the idea is you want to get as many advantages as you can. Soloing is tricky because you can't get res and all that stuff. So I'm actually going to start right at the boss because by doing so you actually get two NPCs right away. Now to the gates. We have no that time will to lose. just help me do damage. And uh, i got to go back to town. I'm going to pick up my Enchantress. She's the best one to use with the Barbarian because she has a passive you can spec for. 15% um, more armor. It just makes you that much more tanky. And Let us fight this evil together. I'll talk about my build during uh, downtimes here. So the idea is, as most uh, Barbarian no, farming uh, builds, you want to be using Revenge the with the Provocation you. Rune. And uh, this will allow you to tank huge you. amounts of mobs and uh, get your health back at the same time. It is RNG, right? 30% chance to proc. So I also included Furious Charge for more, more healing options when my Revenge just isn't proccing for some reason. So first you want to gather up everything and start with a leap to get a, a bonus and just ignore pain up and get low. Once the mobs start dying then you get the health globes and it's easy from there. Alternatively you could also do this part last. This is the, the pathway to the boss but I like doing it first because then I can actually leave and go back to anywhere else in the act using the, the waypoints to find bosses that I can actually kill. So I'll stack that up to five and then as soon as I'm done I'll come back here and kill the boss. Like the last thing you want is to get an elite at the end of this hall that you can't kill for some reason and then not being able to like stack at five but then you can't actually reach the boss which makes it a huge waste of time. So these guys that cast and do this lightning thing are awesome for you because these, these attacks actually will trigger your revenge and don't hit very hard. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing what, what gear I'm using, you can go check my tutorial for how I did Diablo on Inferno solo. And I show every single piece there. I haven't gotten any upgrades since then, so it's still the same stuff. Before the servants of Belial. That sorcerer's illusion blocks our path. So from the way that revenge works, you actually want to get as many mobs around you as you can survive. Need more time. So that you it just guarantees the trigger, right? These guys with the with the two swords at the end of the stick are actually kinda tough because they knock you back. And that not only stuns you for a little bit, like half a second, but also pushes you out of the center of the pack where you can't, uh, you, your revenge won't hit all of them anymore and you might not get topped, so you gotta, gotta watch for that. So this boss is actually the easiest thing ever, like he doesn't, he just tries to run away from me and gets hit all the time, so if you're really low on gear, this is actually, maybe you can just farm this guy for a while, he's uh, like, like really not a challenge. If you want, you can even just run around and let your three NPCs kill him. It's going to take a while, but since he's not an elite pack, he doesn't have an enrage. 
Though actually later on I'll show you how to deal with that. It's uh, sometimes necessary. Okay, so there's going to be an elite pack at the end of this hall. Need more time. And as you can see on the minimap, there's a healing wall over there waiting for me, so I'm going to go get that. Alright, we actually got lucky with the pack here. It's uh, pretty easy. These guys cast, but don't do much damage, so... My revenge is practically guaranteed to proc. As you can see, it's coming up before the, the cooldown is finished. Not ready yet. If, if things get tough and you're about to die, just use the charge to get out of it. And uh, wait until stuff is back up. Uh, later on, I'll, I'll show you the spec I have on my Enchantress. Uh, I mean, I'm not, haven't tested around too much, but I kind of like the things I picked, so... So if we're using damage, I have uh, my Frenzy attack, and you can see those axes going behind me. They, uh, it's the rune for it, right? It's pretty good. It's a way of having AoE and single target at the same time. You definitely want to... You can go with Cleave, I suppose, but this is better for the boss. So the idea is to have a build that can both farm and kill the boss later. And this will do it pretty easily. Assuming you have the gear, I guess. Okay, so this pack's almost dead. That's going to give me my first stack. And now there's so many different places I can go to work my way up to five stacks. And um, I'll show you the play my favorites. This, ki this kind of mob that just stands here and casts and doesn't do anything is my favorite. So whenever I can find one of those, I'm going to try to kill it. Okay, so now I go back, teleport to town, get a waypoint. And uh, let's try the oasis first. So the oasis is full of these um, snake guys. I just gotta find one. Uh, an important thing to remember that there are packs that I cannot kill just from the combination of the skills, the affixes they have, but that, oh, a goblin. I'm not sure I can kill a goblin with this build, but let's try it. Actually, I, I made a mistake here already. I should have, um, I should have actually not killed, killed that elite pack once I knew I, I could do it, because then I could bring the NPCs back with me. They do a little bit of damage. Every little bit helps. So, but it's it's all right. I'll just find something else to do. Yeah, I didn't quite get the goblin. It's kind of hard when you don't have a snare. You just run away from you all day. Though the enchantress, as you can see, as you saw earlier, the, she can bounce him out of the portal. So it gives you an extra chance to do it. So to do this farm, you actually need a certain amount of gear to do it, right? If you're not there yet, I recommend you try Act 1, but really the gear that you get there is nothing but a stepping stone. It's not going to be anything you can sell in the auction house for very much. So, okay, here's first pack. Illusionist. Illusionist is good because it's more targets for revenge, but Frozen and Jailer... I don't know. Frozen is tricky because then you can't use your revenge and they just have a few seconds to hit you. I'm going to try to do them while saving my, uh, my ignore pain for when that happens. So yeah, so they froze me, ignore pain's up. More time. You against my throat. I need aid. Need more time. Run away from this freeze because I don't have ignore pain yet. Still recharging. All 
All right, they're, they're fearing me back to back. It's kind of a tough pack, but. So this is a pack I would consider hard. And I might, I might actually die to it, but we'll see. I am badly hurt. That's looking good, actually. My cooldowns are back up. Still recharging. Ignore Pain for the freeze. I use the rune on Ignore Pain that makes it 7 seconds. That's actually better for solo farming than anything else. Um, just because we'll have situations like this, right? Okay, I got feared into an extra pack of mods, but should be okay since these are almost dead. Alright, I got my first yellow, that's pretty good. So, I'll actually show you what kind of gear drops from this farm. So, yeah, it's not too strong. You can probably sell this for a little bit. And uh, quite a bit of crap, honestly. Most of the gear you get here is not that good, but it would help you get uh, some upgrades if you get lucky. And it doesn't take that long to do compared to other options. Help me, please! Someone help! I'm you fool! Quiet! Or I will rip your tongue from your mouth. Need more time. So once you get past this Act 2 farming, there's a really good spot in Act 3, and I'll show that in a different video. But like it's all about going one act at a time, do what you can. I recommend not trying to do uh, something that's above your level because you're going to die a lot. And uh, I mean repairs and potions, they will add up. So th this guy actually always has a rare. This one is not very good. He also has cheap potions, so I, I recommend coming here and just stocking up. I'm actually going to buy like a few hundred. Yes. I don't know if there's a way to shift click or something to buy more. I, I know that I can't split stacks because I moved the shift key to something else, so I actually have to click this hundreds of times. The dies are also half price, so if you're looking for that, it's uh I don't know. It's probably not as big a deal as the potions because I I chug potions, man. I use like hundreds, maybe a hundred potions a day or so when I'm doing hard stuff. That's the boring part of the video, but I actually need these potions. I'm sorry, guys. Alright. Alright, now I want to find another elite pack. I'm already at two stacks, so once I get to five, I'll show you uh, solo killing Billy Al. He's actually not too hard. I guess you, you need to have the, the gear check for it, right? You want to have to survive that all those ads, but Don't since uh, pretty much the same ads as the rest of the stage, so if you can do that, then you can do Billy Al. The phase two is a lot easier, as long as you don't get uh, overconfident. He drops uh, healing globes a lot, so. Recharging. Okay, I found a unique pack. Waller Electrified Vortex Horde. Yeah, I can do this. Need more time. I need I Whoa, okay, I actually got killed there. But that, that kind of thing happens and it's totally okay because they're still gonna... I can probably reach back there before they regen full and if I just get lucky with uh, the RNG. Yeah. Hey, what's up, man? I'm making a video. Showing people how to farm Barbarian Act 2.
All right, let's try this again. Need more time. So this time, I'm actually going to kite a bit in between the the cooldowns. Not ready yet. Ignore Pain's that. So Ignore Pain is God mode. I, I can tank this easily with Ignore Pain that. Once Ignore Pain is over, leap for the armor bonus rune. Once that's done, I'm gonna charge out. Well, I guess I, in this case I get Vortex in, but yeah. Okay, I'm leaping back in, doing some damage. And the wall is actually working against them here. Blocked this horde away from me. Okay, one more charge. Leap in. Need more time. Do you see that enemy over there? Let us cleanse it from this land. That's uh, another reason why I picked up the charge when you are fighting single targets. The revenge doesn't get that much back. It's only five percent. But if you have two skills that can heal, then it's um, quite a difference. Also, it allows you to kite better by having two movement skills. And lastly, it also knocks the guys back up in the air. So that's um, kind of, works kind of like a stun, and can get you away from a body block if the leaps on cooldown. Okay. So I need to find another pack. Of elites. I'm actually I'm killing this right now. If it were only regular guys, I would ignore it because like it really does not matter to have more units attack me. As long as you can survive the hit, then more guys are actually better because you will heal more with revenge and proc it more consistently. But these guys here, they knock you back when they do that attack right there. So it's if they were in the pack while I'm fighting an elite, that would be problems for me. Heal. Alright, even if there aren't enough elites in this pack, there's several other places I can go. I'm just going to keep going until I find five, and then I'll go back to the boss. But... Kind of look in here, see what's up. Dark magic fills this place like a foul mist. Still recharging. Ready yet. I'm healed. Alright, what do we got? Molten reflects damage, plagued. Huh. Alright, well, I'll give it a shot. I, I don't know if I will be able to because the time. damage on the ground might be too much for me, but let's see. So the key to doing Inferno is having high resists. Like, buffed right now, I have about 800 or so. Yeah, so th they're actually hurting me pretty bad. I should be able to do it, but it's going to be a... I can't just sit there and tank it. Still recharging. I'm hooked. So, uh, I'm waiting until I get low and then I pop in the ignore pain. Actually, uh, yeah, not lucky there. You see, with the revenge, it took quite a bit to, for it to proc, even though like eight mobs are attacking me. So, when that happens, just leap out and wait for uh, cooldown to come back up. I like to like move back in like that and just do one attack of revenge for some health back. And when they line up, charge in, get more health. Alright, back at full. Now, ignore pain's back. And you can do, do this to kill Maz. Like, you really should have no business attacking. 
As long as you do enough damage to kill him before the enrage comes. Oh shit. <laughs> the pot out of that one. Not ready yet. I'm healed. Still recharging. I am badly hurt. Need more time. I hear that these elites actually give better loot, but I haven't noticed it. Like the the yellow marks. I'm sure someone uh, else has tested this properly. I guess the real problem is that 99% of the loot that you get in this game is going to be crap. So, it's hard to say. Still recharging. Alright, that actually went pretty well. I thought it was... Uh, I might have to skip it, just because of the damage on the ground. Oh, nice. Yellow. I can't pick up anything else. Oh, my bags are full already. Hold on. Okay, I'm going back to town and then I'll go somewhere else. Let's check out that gold. Uh, that's not very good. Low armor, no vitality, and uh, I mean strength. I really don't recommend like a DPS barb kind of build just because you're so limited in what you can do. And uh, another thing is, I actually sell a lot of stuff. I see a lot of people doing uh, salvage, but I just have so many mats already, and there's not very much you can do with blacksmithing, so. Um, I'll try to sell them now in the auction house. <laughs> Strength and dexterity on the magic staff. Oh, thank you very much. Well, the DPS is high enough. Maybe maybe someone will give me like 20k for that. And I could probably use this on, on my Enchantress. I'll check it later. Okay. So I'm at four stacks. I just need to kill one more and then I'll show you the boss. I'll try here. So each of these regions has a different kind of mobs that they can spawn as elites. And um, normally you would cherry pick just the ones that you want, right? But I'm actually strong enough that I can do most packs now. So uh, it doesn't mean you... Like you, you might have to, to check all the places, find the packs that are not too hard. Now that guy hits like a truck, man. Still recharging. So I'm gonna save this shrine actually, just in case I find a an elite pack around here. time. Okay, here we go. Elite pack. I will free you. Avenger, Desecrator, Nightmares, Frozen. That's that's tough, man. Because if you get Frozen and Desecrator, you're done. I'll see if I can do a more of a kiting strategy so you guys can see other ways you can you can kill packs. Oh, these wasps are not going to help though. They're kind of tough to kill. Uh, just stand on the edges and still recharging. Actually, now's a good time to go get that protection shrine I left. It certainly helps.
So their mods are really bad, but they only have 800k, so like they're going down pretty fast. So as a as a barbarian, you mostly hate things that take away the control of your character because you want to be able to avoid mechanics and uh, use revenge on cooldown. So Frozen and Nightmarish are actually bad. Uh, Bad affixes for you to fight. Still recharging. And uh, stuff on the ground. It depends how much. Oh, I'm actually I actually got frozen and desecrated, guys. So bad spot. Need more time. So as you can see, like I'm, I'm having to run from from freeze and getting, well, I just got feared into four wasps. Yeah. But I wanted to show you that you can actually do all of these things. That's why I'm taking on this pack. Alright, here we go. So, it's gonna be stack number five. I'm ready for the boss. And another yellow. This is actually uh, above average in terms of yellows. Okay, so five stacks. Now I'll go to Bilia. It might take me a little bit, but definitely I can finish before the bus run out. Need more time. So I'll talk a little bit more about my build as I run over. Um, I'm using Frenzy with the sidearm. Revenge with Provocation, which is completely standard. And uh, Warcry with Impunity, because I have a lot of resists and that increases my defense quite a bit. I think I take 33% uh, less damage because of the Impunity rune alone, plus the arm part. Leap with the armor is basically a shield wall. If you played WoW, anyways, it's a really good tanking cooldown. Lasts for four seconds and cooldown ten, so keep it up pretty frequently. And you actually weave it with ignore pain by um, use the leap first, and then on the six second downtime, use the ignore pain, and then leap after, and you can keep it going like that. There's a downtime while the ignore pain is on cooldown, and you just kite if you have to with uh, the charge. Knows this, Nephilim. Asmodan knows of the stone and the power it contains. Still recharging. We're not ready yet. So another another thing is Enchantress, uh, I mean I don't have good gear for her, but even if she's dead, she's still giving you the, the armor bonus. So all the other characters that I know of, like if they're dead, they're not doing their things, so Ready. 
So this this is probably a gear check for a lot of people because you have to be able to survive all of these ads. You might want to, before you actually try starting the farm like this, I recommend you try the boss a few times, see if you can actually do it. Because the, the loot that matters is the golds, as far as I'm concerned. You're not going to get high, high DPS blue weapons or anything like that over here. And uh, the reason why I like golds, like a lot of people right now are farming Act 4 and killing uh, this one particular boss. They, you can just start a game and be right in front of him. And he's, all the bosses in this game are a lot easier than the Elite Packs. I'm sure you've noticed that by now. So by just doing that one boss over and over, they're getting blues, but they're not getting golds. And as a tank, there's so many stats that you want. You want to have strength, vitality, life percentage, uh, some regen is not bad. And then you want to get uh, all resists, maybe a specific resist on top of that. And shields, you want to have block percentage, all those other things. And I mean, you can even go for more, th more stats, right? Like, you also have to attack, so attack speed on your gloves, on your rings. And even if you're not... Like, you can still sell a good gold for a lot of money. Like, I've, I've been selling the good items that I get from this farm. I can sell for, like, 300000 or uh, it adds up, right? It's all about getting lucky, though. Like, most of the items you get are going to be really bad. So by doing it over and over, you eventually get something really good. It makes it worth it. At some point, though, you're going to want to move up to Act 3. I, I don't think that anyone has Act 4 on a good farm yet. After the nerfs uh, from yesterday that nerfed the, the overpowered skills, I think a lot of people are struggling to farm. So this loot might actually be pretty good for uh, what you can sell. So this is the entire fight. He just does the, that breath, which I completely ignore. He does the attacks on the ground, which don't hurt very bad. You can leap out of them if you want. But then again, that won't trigger your revenge, so it's... I don't know. Charge works on him, so you get the health back and do, and do damage to him. Okay, this part here is the one that you want to avoid. Just run around. bit time consuming. I, I think I could probably change a few things to make this faster, but it's it's a, a balance, right? Because you want to have everything, all the tools you need to be able to kill the elites. Oh, I just lagged. That was scary as hell. So, I mean, I'm pretty happy just doing it like this. Maybe as I get more gear, I'll, I'll start changing things around. That's another option, right? You can also get gear with more damage on it. Like, I, I don't have an attack speed gloves right now. Those are an easy way to get more deeps and uh, rings, too, if you have it. Wow. So I'm actually, everything's on cooldown right now, so I'm going to try to play it safe. Still recharging. I'm 
ready yet. As you can see, he's constantly dropping health gloves. That I'm not aware of any any other boss that does that. Most of them just drop them at, at every 25%. But in this fight, lots of health gloves. So you might actually, if you want, you can bring the pound of flesh passive if you're taking a lot of damage. But I actually don't have that. I'll show you my passives as soon as I can. And there we go. Five stack, Nephilim Valor, Belly Out. And you get a... Oh, I got five yellows, man. That's really lucky. I normally get three. But there's... It's definitely more than you expect. Killing bosses with a Nephilim Valor, because, like, if you look at it, right? I'm only at 113% magic find. Um, normally if you kill a boss such as Belial, you'll get two blues. But if you do it with five stacks, even though it's 113 magic find, you, you would expect like, you know, twice as much, so four blues. But no, you get a lot of gear, guys. And, um, let's, let's check out the drops. So I actually prefer not to get weapons. Because I don't know how to use that. They're not going to be as strong as the blues you can get from later on. I want to get pieces of armor that have lots of interesting stats. Yeah, so it might turn out that none of these are any good, but eventually Oh wow, this is an amazing shield, guys. Look at that. Vitality, resist all, percent life. So this this can actually this this shield can actually sell. I'm probably gonna save it for a friend of mine because he has a, a monk that has. Um, there's this one passive you can get for him that your highest resistance becomes your resistance to everything. So by getting both fire resistance and resist all on the same item, you actually it's really good for monks and it has dexterity. So it's yeah definitely saving that for him. Alright, so yeah, everything else was scrap, that's to be expected, like, it's a uh, numbers game. And just to go over the things that I used again, so, Fierce Charge with Red Art Rune for more health, Iron Hide, Ignore Pain, uh, Leap with Iron Impact, War Cry with Impunity, Frenzy with the Sidearm, and Revenge with Provocation. And then for my passives, I have Nerves of Steel, Superstition, and Tough as Nails. Uh, I'd say these three... Like, there are situations when you want to switch, but you just want to be as tanky as possible. You want to sit in the middle of a pack of 20 enemies and not worry about dying. And just revenge a lot. And, um... Quickly, Leah. I'm going to skip here and go, go back to town so I can show you the, the spec of the Enchantress. I mean, I, then again, I didn't put too much trial and error on this uh, Enchantress build, but it's been working for me, so maybe it will for you as well. Uh, I, I opted for the armor buff, which is amazing. Powered armor. Right? Attackers are slow 30% every time they attack you and increase armor by 15%. This makes you so much tankier. Like, yeah, it's great. And I also picked up these stuns here. Work pretty well. And mass control. So, like, basically she... If there's a pack that I can't really fight because they're too strong for me, every now and then she's going to do a, one of these things, right? And uh, then I can put some damage on them while they're CC'd. And uh, I mean, she's she's otherwise not, doesn't do much. Attacks are very little, so like it's mostly for the buffs and other things she does. And uh, just an overview of, of my gear. So with a shout up, I have 9,000 armor, 50,000 health, and you can see the rest of the stuff here. 
uh, quite high resist as you can see uh, I'm trying to constantly trying to increase these numbers I just want to put them through the roof because um, they're the best stack for tanking actually I personally I believe that everyone should be doing resist or that that's Blizzard's intention but a lot of people are trying to avoid doing that entirely by going with builds that just pack as much damage as, as it, they can but then uh, brings skills to save themselves and that can work but I mean I'm pretty happy with where I'm at just jumping in a pack of mobs and, and killing them all and as long as you can get the five stacks of valor and killing bosses I think that's uh, yeah you're good alright guys that's pretty much it hope you enjoyed the farm video I'll make one for act 3 later and uh, yeah see ya